we are fortunate to have that educational leader in the state of Oregon. It's my honor and privilege to introduce him. He's the governor of our state, the Honorable John Kitzhaber. Thank you very much, Don. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, today, I'm announcing my candidacy for another term as governor of the state of Oregon. Four years ago, our state was a polarized state with an uncertain future. We stood at the depths of the Great Recession. Our legislature was divided and facing high unemployment and a $3.5 billion budget deficit. Four years ago, I asked my fellow Oregonians for the privilege to serve as their governor because there was much work to be done and because I thought I could help. Restoring civility to our public debate and rebuilding the political center that has been at the heart of all our great accomplishments in the past, creating a foundation to support a dynamic and sustainable economy that can create good jobs, establishing a continuum of high quality educational services from preschool to post-secondary education and training, overhauling our health care system to improve health outcomes at a lower cost, and moving to long-term budgeting that would allow us to reinvest uh, in our future. Four years ago, I asked you to think of Oregon as a house that had been built decades ago, and to think of Oregonians as a family that had lived in that house for generations. Over time, the needs of the family and the way it lived has changed, but the structure of the house hasn't. There are too many rooms. They're not the right size. There's no insulation, and the windows are drafty. The cost of keeping up this house is more than the family can afford. The roof needs to be replaced, and the shingles are falling off. At some point, simply patching the house up is not enough. A point comes when you have to build a new house that is affordable and designed for what the family needs and the way the family lives. For better or for worse, the Great Recession leveled the House of Oregon to its foundations. But it also provided us with an opportunity to rebuild that house for the 21st century. And over the last three years, that is exactly what we have been doing. We erased one of the largest per capita budget deficits in the nation with civility and bipartisanship and were rewarded when our credit rating was upgraded from AA to AA+. Over the last three years, we have created over 60,000 new jobs in Oregon, reduced the unemployment rate by 2%. We had the second fastest growing state economy in the nation in 2011 and the third fastest growing economy last year. We've helped accelerate the recovery of the manufacturing sector by securing an inventory of large industrial sites and streamlining our regulatory process. And we've established regional solution centers throughout the state to help local communities accelerate local economic development priorities. We've made progress increasing water for irrigated agriculture in eastern Oregon and scaling up our east side Oregon forest collaboratives. We continue to work to find a solution to the ONC challenges. We've secured the Oregon expansion of Nike and Intel and Daimler Trucks. We've increased our investment in the Oregon Innovation Council and our signature research centers. We've dramatically expanded the film and video sector, and we've provided tax relief for small and family-owned businesses. We've transformed our health care system with over 95% of our Medicaid population now in, in coordinated care organizations that are shifting the focus from after-the-fact acute care and emergency room care to prevention and wellness and the community-based management of chronic conditions. By next year, by January 1st, we will have over 100,000 Oregonians who do not have health insurance coverage today enrolled in those coordinated care organizations that are improving health outcomes and reducing medical inflation, saving hundreds of millions of dollars for the state of Oregon. And we've made significant strides towards transforming our system of public education, creating an outcomes-based seamless system that for the first time aligns budget and governance and funding across the entire continuum from preschool to post-secondary education and training. We've redesigned our early learning system based on achievement compacts to ensure that every child, regardless of their income, their race, their geography, or their home language, is ready to read and ready to learn when they get into kindergarten. We've implemented a kindergarten readiness assessment, and we're making targeted investments designed to get the greatest leverage possible in terms of student results. Now, as important as these accomplishments are, the way we accomplish them is equally as important. While partisanship and ideology are paralyzing our nation's capital, here over the past three years in Oregon, we have shown time and time again 
that it is possible to work together, it is possible to compromise, and we have not allowed partisanship to get in the way of doing the right thing for Oregon and for Oregonians, even when it required people to stretch beyond their ideology and beyond what conventional wisdom said could be done. We've made good and remarkable progress, but change is always fragile in the beginning. It requires persistence to ensure that the roots take hold and will continue to grow and bear fruit in the future. So while we have rebuilt the foundation and begin to frame in the House of Oregon, there remains much work to do for it to fully accommodate all of our citizens. And that's why today I'm asking my fellow Oregonians to give me the privilege of serving one last term. I have an agenda for the next four years that is equally as ambitious as the one that we are currently involved in. We've put in place most of the policies and structures necessary to achieve our 40-40-20 vision. What is required now is adequate funding and consistent implementation over the next several biennia. We must continue to implement our health care reforms and extend them to the private market to ensure that we save millions of dollars, not just for state and local government, but for private sector employers throughout the state of Oregon. On our current course, we may well get 90% of Oregonians with quality health insurance by the end of 2016. We must redouble our efforts to meet our carbon reduction and greenhouse gas reduction goals and accelerate the transition to a sustainable, clean economy that creates family wage jobs while reducing our carbon footprint and replenishing our natural resources. And finally, while we should be proud that we have created 60,000 jobs and we should try to uh, uh, create another 60,000 jobs, most of these jobs are coming in at the top and the bottom of the economic ladder, leaving out the kind of middle income jobs that we all know are so important and so critical to creating prosperity and long-term economic stability. So the great challenge before us is to ensure that the next phase of Oregon's economic recovery reaches all Oregonians and ends the income stagnation that continues to erode the middle class, that exacerbates income equality and widens the opportunity gap and for the first time threatens a generation of Oregonians with the prospect of having shorter lifespans and a lower standard of living than their parents. That forms the outline, but of course there is more. And I want to use this campaign as an opportunity to engage Oregonians in the details and the work that we need to do throughout the state of Oregon. I ask Earl Boyle's school to allow me to kick off my campaign here this morning because it represents the fundamental reason that I'm running. And I think the organizing principle of what we should be focused on as a state and as a state government, and that is the future. The future as represented by the innovative way this school is connecting early childhood with ongoing education and the ability to succeed and to grow and to prosper. The future as represented by the way it breaks down barriers between services and focuses on needs and outcomes rather than on traditional bureaucratic silos. The future in which we recognize that what we must accomplish as a state is not the responsibility of the government, it's not the responsibility of the private sector, it's not the responsibility of the not-profit sector, it is our shared responsibility as Oregonians. But most of all, a future as represented by these children here. These children who look to us to care for them, to prepare them, to keep them and their families safe, and to leave them in Oregon that is worthy of their hopes and dreams and one that is better than when we found it. Thank you very much.